why does an RF integrated circuit or system exhibit nonlinearity? <clears throat> As a general note, an ideal component or network does not exist. In fact, networks or components being designed in practice will become nonlinear at high power levels. But why? To understand why this is the case, consider a simple common source amplifier ignoring the wire circuitry. So we have a simple common source, source voltage Vs through the source resistance Rs is connected to the gate terminal of the transistor in common source configuration. And the output is taken from the drain. We have Rd, we have Vdd, and the output. Under, uh, under the small signal approximation, uh, the output is related to the input through the gain of the amplifier. More precisely, V out over Vs is minus transconductance times RO in parallel with Rd, where RO denotes the channel length modulation. Now, what happens if the uh, signal uh, input signal amplitude is no longer a small uh, uh, signal, is no longer assumed to be a small signal? To understand what's going to happen, uh, look at the transfer curve of the, tra of the circuit, where the MOSFET transistor uh, obviously has some nonlinearity, ID with respect to VGS is shown here. Obviously, we have a nonlinear relationship. And assuming that the input uh, spans over large uh, signal variation, so we can say that, you know, let's assume that the uh, range of the input variation looks like this uh, around the BIOS point, VGSQ. And uh, for the sake of um, simplicity, let's assume that the input uh, is a single tone. So we have a single tone uh, oscillating at around uh, omega input. And uh, we would like to see what's going to happen uh, when the common source amplifier uh, receives such input. First of all, due to the fact that uh, the input undergoes a uh, large variation, we see that uh, the gain of the common source amplifier uh, across the input swing range is no longer uh, <coughs> constant. For example, around this region, you see that the gain is small, uh, and then passing the, the operating point around the uh, lower, higher peak of the input variation, you see that the gain is high. So um, therefore, the output uh, is no longer uh, following the input amplitude in a linear fashion. In fact, if you look at the output, the output looks like this. The uh, linear relationship will not will not will not be existing. Now, this scenario frequently happens in actual communication transceiver. Consider uh, the simplified version of our transmitter, where we have the baseband input here. So we have the baseband input applies to uh, an our conversion mixer, where the LO input is applied to other uh, other input of the uh, mixer, and after some filtering. we have the power amplifier. So here, the power amplifier receiving the signal uh, out of the uh, filter uh, is no longer assumed to be a small signal circuit because this uh, signal here is rather large. Okay, so therefore, the nonlinearity analysis is very crucial in practical uh, communication transmitters and receivers. More importantly, uh, the linearity range, in fact, sets a ceiling or upper limit for the dynamic range of the system. In this course, uh, we are going to uh, have an overview of some of the effects of nonlinearity, including gain compression, harmonic distortion, and intermodulation. To quantify this analysis, uh, let's assume that we have a memoryless nonlinear system whose input output characteristic is uh, derived by using a power series. So VOT in particular is equal to uh, the uh, constant plus the uh, fundamental power plus the second higher, higher uh, second order nonlinearity and the third order nonlinearity. Some special case examples uh, are worthy of uh, consideration. For example, if alpha zero is the only non-zero coefficient, then the system is simplified to become a rectifier. If alpha one, on the other hand, would be uh, the only non-zero coefficient, then the the nonlinear system becomes a linear amplifier. And finally, if alpha k, where k is any uh, number greater than one would be the um, uh, only non-zero coefficient, then we 
end up having a frequency multiplier. In fact, a multiply by k frequency multiplier. Throughout this course, <clears throat> whenever needed, uh, we are uh, utilizing some trigonometric relationship in order to perform uh, the linearity analysis. Uh, I have summarized a number of uh, important uh, trigonometric relationship here that time and again I'm going to be referring to in order to perform the, um, the analysis of the systems. <clears throat>